Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on Hit The Blocks. In this video, I'm going to introduce you the ERC-223 token standard. This token standard is very similar to ERC-20. It also allows to represent tokens on the blockchain and to transfer these tokens. However, it addresses a flow of ERC-20. So what's the problem with ERC-20 tokens? If you send an ERC-20 token to a smart contract that does not know how to handle these tokens, then the tokens will be lost inside the recipient contract. Let me explain with an example. So let's say that here I have a smart contract, which is a recipient, my recipient contract, and you send token to it. Once these tokens are transferred to the contract, the only way you can send these tokens from your contract to another Ethereum address is if you have a function in your, in your smart contract that allow this, so for example, function transfer address to and here an integer for the amount and inside you will call the ERC20 token to do the transfer. But if you don't have this transfer function, then it's impossible to move your tokens. A smart contract is different from a regular Ethereum address where you can sign transaction however you want. In a smart contract, the only thing you can do is call the function that already exists inside. And actually on the discussion thread of ERC-223, you can see a list of projects that got a lot of token lost because of this flow of ERC-20. Another problem of ERC-20 is that recipient smart contracts have no way to react to incoming transfer. It'd be really nice if when an ERC-20 token is sent to a smart contract, this smart contract could have one of its functions executed, for example. So let's see how ERC-223 solve this problem. So let's scroll down to the specification and we will see some of the same function as for ERC-20, like total supply, name, symbol, decimals, balance of, and then to transfer function. So the first transfer function has exactly the same function signature as for ERC-20 tokens. And this is for compatibility with ERC-20. And second transfer function takes a bytes argument. So that allow you to attach data to a transfer. And so the big difference between these two transfer function and the one of ERC-20 is that for ERC-223, if the recipient is a smart contract, it's going to invoke a function called token fallback on the recipient contract. And if the recipient contract does not have this function, then the transaction is going to fail. So that's really the big difference with ERC-20 tokens. You'll also notice that there is no delegated transfer for ERC-223, so no transfer from function. And the reason is because with this new mechanism, by calling this token fallback function on the recipient contract, then you are not supposed to need delegated transfer. By the way, I know that there is a lot of information to digest about Ethereum token, so I've prepared a compact cheat sheet with all the major token standard and it's totally free. If you want to get your hands on it, just follow the link in the description. So the solution introduced by ERC-223 is pretty cool and it really simplifies token movements. If you take a step back, the general idea introduced by ERC-223 is that for smart contract interaction, it'd be useful for a smart contract to know if an other smart contract implement some function. And there is another standard that formalized this, that's ERC-165. And we're going to see this in the next video. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you for the next video.